today we have decided to answer a regular question that keeps coming up in the comments, and that is about decals, customization, names on rods, writing on rods, that final touch which makes it custom to the customer or to yourself or your brand. Um, and there's obviously do's, don'ts, and some tips and tricks that I can definitely show you. I've been doing it quite a while now and I've worked out a way that I think is cool. Uh, so I'm gonna dig out the bits I need and we'll go through it. This is Rob Building, roll intro. I'm Gary Benny, English rod builder living in Sweden. I've been building rods for many years and now you're gonna join me in my workshop going through tips, tricks, techniques, tools of the trade, all the things you want to know when you're coming to build a rod. We're gonna drink a lot of tea, so join me on the ride. Let's have some fun. This is Rod Building, let's do this. So different decals. When it comes to decals, we're thinking about a sticker. Um, there is other ways of doing graphics onto rods, and that is what you call a screen print. Uh, but that's done with a machine, which are quite expensive. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can get companies to do it for you. Uh, you have to take the rods there, the blanks, and they can do it for you. Um, that's more of a factory look, as we call it. Um, and some people really like that. They want that factory clean look. I prefer to keep it a little bit more custom, if I'm totally honest. So, yeah, let's be honest. We're, we're going to be talking about doing applying our decals, our stickers, um, and also handwriting on rods. So that's what we're going to look at today. And we're going to start off with uh, the decals, stickers. So I have a full uh, folder full of decals that I use on rods when I get them printed out. And there's different types, um, and I know a lot of people keep asking, where do you get your decals made? How do you get them made? And that's a question I think that we should go over um, because there is different types. Now, the one thing to remember is on a decal is the different types, you've got stickers that are single color and double color on clear backgrounds, or you've got vinyl cutout stickers. The vinyl cutout stickers can be made of any color and they normally need to be a little bit bigger because of the way they're made and they're cut out with a knife around the outline. So they're not gonna be as small as a decal that is printed onto a surface material. Now, the surface material is super important. Now, I've spent hours working this out with print companies to try and find a decent solution. If you've ever seen decals when you put them on, you'll see sometimes you've got like a milky kind of background, and that's actually a couple things. One, it's the glue between the blank and the decal, the sticker, or it's the surface coating applied on top of where they printed, and that's gonna give you that milky look, and I don't really like it. So I was working out a way to get around that. Now, I'm not saying you can just go to any print shop and ask for what information I'm gonna tell you, but I'm gonna tell you what I use. I worked very closely with a local print shop to find a laminate that was very, very thin and they do a screen print onto that A4 sheet for me. So I got some A4s made up and it's a start cost involved with doing this so it isn't cheap and it's not gonna be for just doing one sticker. I use this for doing my own decal for my brand which is True Custom Rods and you can see I got them made in black, in white which is a bit tricky to see there, gold, I've also got silvers, blues, anything. Now if you're gonna get whites done, white ink on clear, silver and gold, that's gonna be a bit tricky. Not all shops can do that, and that's why they do the screen for me. Uh, if you're gonna get your done, I would recommend getting a few different designs made on one sheet and then paying for the start cost and getting them all done at one time. And then I choose to cut them myself with a pair of snips very easily and apply them to the blank, which we'll show you a little bit later on. So if you're gonna be trying to make full color decals, this is where it's gonna get a little bit tricky. You generally need to print that onto a very thin white vinyl. Um, and you're gonna struggle with colors like gold and silver and metallics generally. Some people can do it and uh, technology's moving on, so keep looking. But generally speaking, you should get a really good design and you should get it printed out um, and get a few done. Uh, that's gonna be tricky. I know the custom guy wants to do one decal of this and one decal of that, and that's not really possible if you're gonna get really professional decals made. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. Uh, I've tried it, and it just doesn't really work. What I do sometimes, I will combine a lot of customers in one time, and I'll get it printed out in one go. That's gonna save slightly, but the start costs often outweigh the cost. 
if the customer really wants it, then of course, you know, they'll have to pay what it is. But generally speaking, for your own decal, I'd recommend getting a print shop to make it professionally for you. You're not gonna get a better finish. If you're gonna do full color decals, it starts to get a little bit more expensive. If not, you need to use the ones that come with the blanks, for example, or learn to write on rods. So now let's look at how I actually put them on. Uh, let's get to it. Now we're gonna look at some simple tools you need, and it's not a lot. You need some application tape. Uh, I use normal masking tape. Uh, some decals you need to be a bit careful. If you put the masking tape all the way over the top, you could pull it off if it doesn't have a clear film. You'll check that out in a minute. You need something to cut stuff with, uh, maybe a burnishing tool if you don't want to use uh, a metal. I tend to use the back of picks. I find it's very round uh, and it just goes up and down very easily. So I tend to use picks and things like that. Of course, a measure if you want to make sure you're putting the decal in the same place, doing multiple rods. Um, and then really good eyes because uh, you will go through a lot of decals if you're not getting them straight on the blank. I tend to always clamp the rod down into the power wrapper quite tight and I'll put it in the angle I want to go and then I'll come over and apply it. So let's grab a decal and put it on a blank. So now we're going to put on a factory decal. Uh, this is the ones that come with the blanks. They're normally very high quality, nice and thin, so not really much to, to worry about. Uh, there's a few little tips and tricks about how to apply them we're going to go through now uh, and we're going to keep it very short and sweet. If you do get one that's not flat, uh, they're a bit crinkly, contact the blank manufacturer and they normally have spares, but you're never going to get that out and you will see it under the epoxy. So the first thing to do is to uh, you know, get some application tape and a pair of snips. Now, what I want to do to remove that around the edge around is I will cut off any excess around the decal as close as I can to the print. And the reason for that is because it's gonna make you not see a visible line around the decal as much as if you did leave it. So start by trimming the fat, if you will, off the decal, like so. So it's very, very thin. Then what I'm gonna do is I'd lay the decal down on the bench, get my application tape. And now this is very key, you need to come over the top and lay it as flat and straight to the bottom of the tape as you can. So it looks like this. The reason for that is because it's gonna give an easier eye to keep it straight on the blank. Now before you apply to the blank, there's a very important thing to do. You need to make sure it's clean and no oils or residues. And you should have already thought about that, so just get some cleaning fluid, some alcohol, and just rub around, and make sure there's no oils on top, because if there's any contaminants around your decal, when you do your epoxy, you're gonna find the decal could lift or it also get fish eyeing around. A top tip I've got for you is to get a tack rag. Now, if you've got dust around there, I use this before I do epoxying, but also on decals, I just gently wipe around the blank just to remove any dust. You don't need to apply too much. You don't wanna make it sticky. Just literally rub over the top very loosely and take away the dust. And I keep it in a plastic bag so it's clean all the time. So then we're ready to apply the decal. Make sure the blank is really straight, like so. And then simply remove the backing and just hold the application tape. You need a decent bit to hold on to. I see people trying to do it very fiddly. You don't want it too long so you can't see where it's gonna go. Uh, I've already made marks on the blank for where it needs to go after measuring the total length of the decal. It's quite important. So always measure twice and cut once, as we always say. And then very basically, we're gonna come onto the blank and try and line it up. Now with a carp reel seat, it's quite cool because we've got this channel on the top that we can use and we know that's our straight line. And then looking through the application tape, we kind of line up in the middle where we know the ends of the decal are and just loosely put it on and then look down the blank and see if we think we're level. I think we're a little bit high on that one, so I'm just gonna bring it back down. Again, making sure that it's level and also straight. Just tweak it in position. If you don't push down on it, it's not gonna apply. You can lift it up a few times without worrying. Just gonna make sure she's straight. And I think now that's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna check one last time. Yeah, that's really good. So now when I've got it in position, I'm gonna take that tool that I said with a nice flat smooth surface and without too much pressure, I see people going crazy, I'm just gonna gently rub over the top of the area where the decal is, just going over the edges and make sure it's all down flat. And when it's done, very simply with an acute angle, 
just pull back very carefully, leaving the decal. And there we have it. One perfectly placed decal in the middle of the blank. So now I just want to show you exactly the difference in some of the films with the decals. I've put one that you can buy on an online rod shop, uh, so you can get your own custom. You can buy in ones, twos, threes, which is really convenient. And then also I've got one of my uh, true custom decals, which I get made in the A4. Uh, I clip it out and then I put the application tape on it and I then cut the application tape to be as thin around the edge of the, the decal, just because it makes positioning really good. And then what we're gonna do is just come over and apply that decal onto the blank in the same way. And then getting our tool, again, just rub gently, not too much pressure over the top, like so. And as long as you've got a clean, flat, smooth surface, you won't get any air bubbles, and it will look really clear. Now, it's not easy to see, but if you look very, very closely, you will see you've got a kind of a milkiness on the back of this uh, clear. Whereas if you look very closely to the one over here, there's no milky whatsoever. It's very clear. And that's the difference. It's the final quality. And that will be exaggerated when you put your, your clear coat over the top. It's going to look a little bit more milky and smoky, you could say. Uh, obviously, you can trim this one down as close as you could, but you're never going to get rid of that sharp line where you have that contrast of that milky clear and the real clear. So another really cool little thing that's come out on the market is uh, it's customized. It is like a decal and it's these name plates. They're actually like metal and they're raised. They're really cool. These are the Bushido ones and you've got like a black and a silver and a silver one there and they look really cool. Uh, so I'm just going to put them on. It's, it's super simple. There's no handwriting. There's no application to worry about. It's basically the same as whipping on a guide. Um, we'll just quickly do that and you can have a quick look how good it looks. there we have it that's really cool just a bit of epoxy over the top like you would your normal guide wrapping and uh, yeah looks really smart another option if you don't want to hand write or use decals is to use a nameplate like that so that's the decals and how we apply those and to make them look good some tips and tricks hopefully that's gonna work for you but of course, we did mention about the best way, and that is about writing on the rod. It does require a bit of skill, but in my opinion, it is the ultimate. You can write whatever you want, but you're gonna need to have a couple things. Firstly, the tools to do it, and also the skill set. If you've got good handwriting, it's gonna help you, but it is something you can learn by maybe doing some practice in calligraphy and things. The tools you're gonna need for doing this are quite simple. You're gonna need a couple things. Want something to write on it with that's got a color or an ink, um, and some materials like supports, etc. That's going to make your life a bit easier. Um, one of the ways you can do it is you can use these sort of paint pens. Um, now, these come in a variety of different colors and they also have different uh, tips. So, some are finer, some are thicker. Um, and they work pretty good. Um, you know, you can do good things with them. Uh, I've tried on this scrap bit of blank here for lots of practices. You see lots of different words and text and everything there. Um, and, it, and it looks really good. but. It's not the best possibly. Um, I'll show you just how it looks. The best thing you can do is get some support uh, of some sort. I just use these mobile phone uh, desk supports uh, that I found. And that just gives you uh, a little bit of an easier platform to, to put the blank on. Um, obviously when you've got a fully built rod, it can be a little bit more tricky, but you can raise it up in different ways. You can put it like so and write on it, whatever feels comfortable to you. But the most important thing is to rest your wrist and what you want to do is just very gently uh, just write down the blank. You can practice on a bit of paper as well for the kind of style you want. Um, but very simply, you just want to write down the blank like so. And that may not be the best, but it works. But you can see how thick it is. And you could try and press a little bit lighter maybe uh, to see if you can get no, it's, it's good, but it's not really good enough. And I've tried all sorts of ways, and the best I've found is these pens, calligraphy ink pens. But there's one major problem, and that is uh, 
I suck at using them. And I've tried everything. I've tried all different types of inks, all different types of nibs, but I have found a solution. Hello. Like a lot of rod builders before me, they have used their better half to write on their rods. Um, I can think of many famous rod builders all across Europe that have actually been their a partner or some sort is doing the writing for them who's got a good handwriting style and luckily for me Johanna has worked out a fine art of writing with these calligraphy pens so I thought we'd uh, invite her up to show us exactly how she does it on one of the rods. Yeah. So there is a few different things you can buy for doing this and that's regards to these pens. Um, you buy them with the different stem and then the separate tips. Now, um, they come in different grades and different pressures and everything. Uh, you need to play and find out what's better for you. Uh, these are the extra, extra fine versions. Now, one tip I would give you when you buy them, they are quite sharp uh, because they're designed for writing on paper, um, but we're gonna be doing on blanks and we don't wanna scratch them. So one thing I would say is when you do buy them, uh, the first thing you wanna do is on a hard surface like a tabletop is just sort of push down and rub in a figure of eight fashion like so until you feel that it sort of like goes smooth. So that's a tip that you're gonna like and it's also gonna help the ink flow. So, you know, that's about as far as my expertise with these go. Uh, now it's your turn. Thank you. I always start by putting some tape on the blank to mark where I'm going to write. And you'll notice Johanna's now got the rod supported a little bit higher. And you, you find it easier to raise it up like that? I do, yes. Is that for any reason or? Um, it's just something that I find comfortable when it's a little bit raised up uh, on one end. I just find it easier. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna just mark uh, the center. So that I have something to look at. Uh, while I'm writing to see that it's centered. I found the problem when I tried it is that the longer the text, the more I would bend and start wonky. Yeah. And that's gonna help you do that. Yeah. Okay. Another thing that I always do is uh, I write on a piece of paper what I'm gonna write uh, in the same size as I'm gonna write it on the rod. Um, just to practice once or five times <laughs> if necessary. Now I've written on the paper, so I know how much space I need, and I can adjust the tape. And that's gonna make it much easier with those marks being closer together, because then you're gonna see your top line a lot easier. Um, also, one thing we uh, haven't mentioned, but Johanna always does, is we measure the center first, so you know exactly, but maybe you don't want it to be in the center. Um, personally, if I was gonna write on it, it'd be wrapping around the blank, so. Uh, <laughs> Inks, uh, these are calligraphy inks, these are white. Uh, you can get many different ones. Some flow a little bit easier than others, so you should shop around and find the one that's best for you. Um, this Winsor & Newton one's really good, uh, and this Liquitex also. I don't know if you've got a favorite, but you seem to use both. Yeah, um, so, and they come in different colors as well. You know, you can get gold and silvers, but like I said, some flow better than others, and I know that you prefer the white generally. Yeah. So let's uh, see you doing it. And it's done. So now you can just take away the tape. And uh, one thing I would say um, is that don't worry too much if you do make mistakes because uh, this is water-based. So Johanna always tends to have a little pot of water like this and some tissue. So you can easily just wipe it away and, um, and start again. Have you got any tips about sort of like writing and stuff? Because I've noticed you do it in sort of stages. Well, it's not like writing uh, on a piece of paper. Definitely not. So it, you do need some practice um, and take it slow and just one line at a time, pretty much. Cool. And yeah, lots of practice. You make it sound too easy. I know it's not as easy as it sounds, but it looks absolutely fantastic. And that is the real way to custom write on your rod. So that was the complete how to and what to and why and if and buts about everything on the decals. 
hopefully that made sense to you. If you've got any questions, make sure to ask us in the comment section below and I will try and find time to answer it. In the meantime, you need to make sure, of course, you subscribe to our channel to see all the content we're bringing you. Um, a big thank you to Johanna, of course, for showing us exactly how you should really customize your rod by learning how to write on it, which I need to work on too. Uh, I'm getting a little bit special because I need to have a cup of tea. It's been a while. So until then, this is rod building. Thank you very much. That's a wrap.